management team to the front and our special guests who I believe might be Media interview was ongoing just a few seconds ago. Okay, so welcome again to the groundbreaking ceremony of the Lloyd T. Evans Plant Growth Facility. It will be a state of the art building and will serve as a key international resource and venue for biotechnological research and genetic diversity conservation. To welcome us officially um, and to welcome all of our special guests, allow me to call on our Deputy Director General for Research, Dr. Matthew Morrill. Thanks very much, Tony, and uh, I'd like to extend a very special welcome to the Honourable Senator, uh, to Ms. Honrado from the uh, Australian Centre for International Agricultural Research and uh, to all of our uh, scientists attending uh, the Uri Grisp Week. It really is uh, a fabulous uh, pleasure to be able to be here today uh, to mark the groundbreaking for this facility. There are a number of important reasons. The first, uh, from the perspective of a, a scientist, is that this is going to provide us with a critical facility uh, for enabling us to study in fine detail the uh, interactions of plants with their environment by being able to conduct experiments in extremely uh, controlled environmental conditions. As we face the challenges of, of climate change, we face the challenge of producing rice for very varied environments around the world. It's critical for us to be able to study those interactions between plants uh, and the uh, specific environmental challenges that they're going to be facing. When we look at the time capsules there, one for 2035 and one for 2060, we can really only uh, begin to predict what the climate will be like, what the rice growing conditions will be like on one hand, so that is a major challenge. On the other hand, what fantastic technologies might be available uh, by that time to be able to make progress when we think back uh, in rice science over the last period since uh, the rice genome was first sequenced just uh, a short time ago now really. Uh, we now have just this year been able to release a sequence of, of 3,000 rice genomes. So this facility will be very important to help us unlock the information that those genomes encode. We may, of course, be just taking a mobile phone and holding it up against a plant and getting the DNA sequence by that time. Who knows? <laughs> you would have laughed 10 years ago if you said we'd had 3,000 genomes. The connection with Australia is strong. Lloyd Evans was a pioneer in uh, developing uh, Phytotron facilities. Of course, he was much more uh, well known for his work in plant science generally. He played a very important role in Australia. He was uh, a chief of the Division of Plant Industry at CSIRO and there is uh, a strong and enduring connection between URI and Australia that makes this uh, a very appropriate uh, relationship to continue <laughs> through this building. And we have many strong connections with the groups that uh, Lloyd was involved in, in our C4 rice project, in phenotyping <coughs> projects, uh, in a whole range of genetic analysis projects that are ongoing. And for me, it's a particular pleasure, of course, being uh, an Australian, uh, seeing my taxpayers' dollars turn up here is, is fantastic. 
and uh, to continue that connection. So, uh, welcome to all of you again. Uh, this facility is going to make a, a big difference. I think, Bob, we would say that this is the first of a number of facilities we'd like to see enhance our uh, capacity to meet the challenges uh, of rice, population growth, climate change. And again, to go back to Lloyd, he wrote uh, very persuasively and made a big impact with some of his writings about the challenge. And I think uh, we were discussing at the Erie Grist Week that we cannot become complacent about meeting the challenges of the future. And I think uh, that again brings us back to a strong connection there. So again, welcome to our guests and thank you very much.